In this video class 10, I'm going to discuss some of the numericals from the topic machines. Okay, so before we proceed with the video, uh, let me tell you a few things, okay, which I forgot to mention in the previous video on numericals from work power energy. All right, and that is, uh, see, uh, I won't be able to deal with all of the videos, I mean, all of the numericals in this particular video, okay, neither would it be possible if we were having our regular classes as well. So what I'm telling you, uh, class 10, uh, is that you'll have to practice problems, okay? It'll help you in the long run, remember. Uh, I understand you have, you already have solved materials, okay? You also have that uh, application, all Selena solutions or something, okay? So everything is in, you know, solved format there. Everything is solved, including the numericals. So don't just stay at home thinking that everything is solved. So I will look at it before the exam or something like that. Okay, don't stay relaxed that way. All right. Remember, it is only practice and practicing numericals that's going to help you remember. Okay, so I suggest you to be practicing numericals. Okay, um, when you watch this video, okay, whenever you watch this video, um, do these problems also that I have discussed in the in this video okay so let us proceed with the video now so first of all I started with the uh, um, with an easy problem okay all these numericals that I have discussed here that I'm discussing in the video okay uh, are there in the exercise okay at the end of the topic machines so <clears throat> let's start a pair of scissors has its blades 15 centimeters long okay and i forgot to write this over here so i've written it later and handle length is 7.5 centimeters what is the mechanical advantage so in you know uh, whenever and wherever possible i tell you draw pictures okay so this is the picture that i've drawn okay and this represents a machine i mean this represents a pair of scissors over here so the question says, a pair of scissors, remember, is a first-class machine, first-class lever, sorry. Okay, now in a first-class lever, what happens is the fulcrum is in between. I have told you to remember this, F-L-E. So this tells us that in a first-class lever, fulcrum is in between. In a second-class lever, the load is in between, the fulcrum and the effort, of course. And in third-class lever, the effort is in between, the fulcrum and the load. So remember this, okay. So since a pair of scissors is a first class machine, so the, we have the fulcrum in between. Only thing is I haven't written that this is a fulcrum. Okay. So load. So the question says, has its blades 15 centimeters long? Remember, in case of the scissors, okay, the length of the blade is the load arm. Okay. Because uh, it is on the blades that you are going to place the cloth, which is to be cut. So the cloth is the load over here. So therefore, the length of the blades happens to be the load arm and the handle length is your effort arm thereby we are going to put our effort on the handles so uh, effort arm is 7.5 centimeters load arm is 15 centimeters now once we get that okay so i've written given load arm 15 centimeters effort arm 7.5 centimeters so therefore mechanical advantage this is the equation for mechanical advantage effort arm divided by load arm so this is it Okay, and mechanical advantage comes out to be 0 0.5. Of course, it is unitless because it is the ratio of the same two quantities. Second question, <clears throat> a man uses a crowbar. A crowbar is a lever or rod, basically a simple rod, which is used to lift, lift some load. Okay, like this. Okay, here. All right, so this would be a crowbar, remember. Okay, another picture, uh, if we have here, crowbar, okay, so this is a rod, okay, so this point is the fulcrum and it is being used to lift up a load, alright, so that's a crowbar, so a man uses a crowbar of length 1.5 centimeters, so here is my picture, this is my length of the crowbar, it is 1.5 meters, to raise a load of 75 kilogram force by putting a sharp edge below the bar. Okay, so this is a sharp edge below the bar at a distance of 1 meters. So since the sharp edge is placed at a distance of 1 meter as the question says, overall the length of the rod being 1.5 meters. So therefore this sharp edge acts as the fulcrum. Okay, and the load is that of 75, 75 kilogram force. 
okay so it has to be by the side okay uh, and and what is a uh, shop is below the bar at a distance of one meter from its hand okay so this is where the hand of the person will be so from this point okay from from this point the fulcrum is at a distance of one meter all right and the load is 75 kilogram force so what are the things that are given effort arm is given one meter okay now since the length total length of the rod is given and the effort arm is given there's no problem for you to find the load arm load arm will be 1.5 minus 1 meter which is 0 0.5 meters so this distance lf will be 0 0.5 meters so the question is something like this state the kind of lever now since the fulcrum is is in between it has to be a first class lever calculate load arm load arm is the total length of the rod minus the effort arm which is 0 0.5 meters that's a load arm calculate effort arm effort arm is mentioned in the question itself so effort arm is one meter okay effort arm is one meter then after the question says mechanical advantage okay now once we know the effort arm and the load arm okay the length the respective lengths so it's no problem finding the mechanical advantage mechanical advantage is effort arm divided by load arm which is one meter divided by 0 0.5 meters which is two then after finally the question asks what is the effort needed to lift this load up okay what is the effort needed now we need to find so what are the things that we know we know the load we know the load arm we know the effort arm we don't know the effort okay now to find the effort we need to use something called the principle of a lever the principle of a lever says load into load arm okay is equal to effort into effort arm this is what it says the principle of lever is basically derived from your principle of moments don't forget which says the sum of the clockwise moments is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moment okay because this load over here is going to give you the anti-clockwise moment okay this load into this distance from the axis or the fulcrum load into load arm is your anti-clockwise moment and effort into effort arm is your clockwise moment so basically principle of lever is derived from the principle of moments so you could also have written from the principle of moments you can write that to remember we get load into load arm is effort into effort arm you could have written that also so we know load we know load arm we don't know effort this is what is required to be found we know what is effort arm Okay, effort arm is 1 meter, effort arm is 1 meter, load arm is 0 0.5 meters, load is 75 kgf. Okay, so we substitute the values and thereby effort comes out to be 75 into 0 0.5 divided by 1. So effort is 37.5 kgf. Okay, this is how you do this problem. Then after, one more problem here. It says a pair of scissors, again, a pair of scissors is a class one lever don't forget that okay a pair of scissors is used because the fulcrum is in between a pair of scissors is used to cut piece of cloth of course by keeping it at a distance of eight centimeters from its from its rivet it says rivet rivet is the fulcrum the point where the two hands or let me say hands of this like this okay rivet would be this all right so rivet is the point where the two hands so this is one arm of the scissor this is one arm of the scissor so you have your handles here okay so this is the rivet okay so a pair of scissors is used to cut a piece of cloth by keeping it at a distance of eight centimeters from its rivet so rivet is the fulcrum okay and it says piece of cloth by keeping it at a distance of eight centimeters so the cloth is the load and the cloth is placed at a distance of eight centimeters from the rivet so the distance so to say of the load arm is 8 centimeters and effort of 10 kgf by fingers at a distance of 2 centimeters from the rivet so the effort of 10 kgf is applied at a distance of 2 centimeters from the rivet or from the fulcrum okay so this is the picture so then after it says find the mechanical advantage of the scissors now you know effort arm you know load arm so calculate mechanical advantage mechanical advantage is effort arm by load arm so which is this which comes out to be one one upon four is 0 0.25 okay now remember one thing if the mechanical advantage is greater than one that machine acts as a force multiplier remember it acts as a force 
multiplier and if mechanical advantage is lesser than one it acts as a speed multiplier so since in case of the scissor in case of the pair of scissors okay the mechanical advantage comes out to be lesser than one so therefore it acts as a multi a speed multiplier remember that okay <clears throat> then after it says so first part is done second part says the load offered by the cloth okay now we need to find we know the effort we know effort arm we know load arm we don't know load that is what the question is asking so again we have to use the principle of lever load into load arm is effort into effort arm or l into 8 centimeters is 10 kgf into 2 centimeters so from here we find the load and here also i have written if mechanical since mechanical advantage is less than one therefore it acts as a speed multiplier okay so these are the kind of questions that you will get remember all right uh, one more question here a four meter long rod of negligible weight okay is supported at a point 125 centimeters from its one end is supported at a point means the fulcrum is at a distance of 125 centimeters from one of its ends okay so here so this is the rod its total length is four meters as the question says now there's the fulcrum it is supported at a distance of 125 centimeters from one of its ends so this is the end that we are talking about okay from this end it is the fulcrum or the support is at a distance of what 25 centimeters then after and a load of 18 kgf is suspended at a point 60 centimeters from the support on the shorter arm now see so the overall length of the rod is four meters and the fulcrum is at a distance of 125 centimeters so therefore this happens to be the shorter arm okay this happens to be the longer arm now the question is saying a load of 18 kgf is suspended at a point 60 centimeters from the support at a point 60 centimeters from the support on the shorter arm so on the shorter arm so this side which means from at a distance of 60 centimeters from the support so from this fulcrum at a distance of 60 centimeters we have a load of 18 kgf suspended all right then after the question says if a weight w is placed at a distance of 250 centimeters from the support on the longer arm find w okay so from the support at a dist from the support from the fulcrum at a distance of 250 centimeters we are placing a weight w okay to balance the rod all right so we are required to find that so this simply again is a problem of principle of moments okay because we know this we know the load arm we know the effort arm okay we know so to say the anti-clockwise moment okay we need to find we know this 250 into w will give us the clockwise moment we need to find w so it's basically a problem of you know principle of moments okay but since it's a case of lever so therefore we are writing from the principle of lever load into load arm is effort into effort arm or the value of load is this much load arm is this much w into 250 centimeters so w is do the calculation okay it comes out to be 4.32 kgf okay <clears throat> the second part of the question says if a weight 5 kgf is kept to balance the rod find its position okay um this particular part of the question was wasn't also you know very clear to me okay because this question doesn't mention we are this thing doesn't mention we are, whether we are removing w and then after we are suspending this okay on which side are we or if w is still hung okay still suspended on which side this is you know um this is placed on the shorter side on the or the longer side it's not specified okay but what this question is trying to say is if a weight of 5 kgf is kept to balance the rod meaning you have to take out w so w is no longer over here so instead of w what we are doing is and uh, instead of w so since w is not here the rod is not going to be balanced so to balance the the balance to balance the rod obviously we have to place a weight of 5 kgf somewhere here of course on the longer side what i mean to say is okay so w is no longer here so we are to place 5 kgf so where what should be the distance of 5 kgf from the fulcrum so to say 
okay so <clears throat> so the second part of the question we can start this way since a weight of 5 kg if is placed to balance the rod it has to be placed on the longer side okay therefore from the principle of lever load into load arm is effort into effort arm so effort arm means we need to find this distance now okay we know the value of the effort which is 5 kgf now we know for it is 5 kgf with the load is still the same the load arm is still the same we need to find the effort arm so obviously we will use principle of moments or principle of lever so principle of lever is this so effort arm will be given by 18 kgf into 16 centimeters by 5 kgf which is 216 centimeters or 2.16 meter now what i haven't mentioned is that would be a blunder okay what i've done over here is a blunder because i haven't mentioned this distance is from which point okay so two point so you have to write 5 kg f is to be suspended at a dist is distance okay you will write distance in full at a distance of 2.16 meters from the fulcrum or the support this is what you need to mention remember okay and then after finally the question says to which class of lever does it belong of course this belongs to first class lever okay all right <clears throat> then after what happened is then after i got a bit lazy to go on copying the questions okay so therefore i in order to show you the question i open this textbook all right and this let us look at this question number eight all right it says i hope you all can read the question it says a lever of length nine centimeter has its load arm five centimeters long and effort arm nine centimeters long so we have a lever whose total length is nine centimeters its load arm is 5 centimeters and effort arm is 9 centimeters. Na effort arm itself is 9 centimeters, remember. So to say, the effort, remember all distances are measured from the fulcrum, the axis. Okay. So the load has to be in between. Since load arm is shorter than the effort arm. Okay. So the load has to be in between. Okay. So to say, this happens to be a second class lever because the load is in between. All right. So load arm is 5 centimeters. Effort arm is 9 centimeters. To which class of lever does it belong? Of course, second class lever because the load is in between. Draw a diagram of the lever showing the position of fulcrum F. Okay. And directions of both the load and the effort. So fulcrum is here. Load is down here. Effort is in the upward direction for a second class lever. Okay. Then what is the mechanical advantage and velocity ratio if the efficiency is 100%? Let us try calculating the efficiency. I mean, uh, the mechanical advantage first. Mechanical advantage is effort arm by load arm, which is 9 centimeters or 5 centimeters, which comes out to be 1.8. Now, since efficiency is 100%, so velocity ratio and mechanical advantage both will be 1.8 because efficiency denoted by an eta, this is ETA eta, a Greek letter, like we have alpha, beta, theta. So this is eta is mechanical advantage upon velocity ratio. So since efficiency is 100%, mechanical advantage and velocity ratio will have the same value, which is 1.8. Okay, and then finally, what is what will be the mechanical advantage and the velocity ratio if the efficiency becomes 50%? If the efficiency becomes 50%, okay, this is the equation for efficient, this is the relation between efficiency mechanical advantage and velocity ratio so what is happening is the efficiency is decreasing get one thing very very clearly when the efficiency decreases okay the velocity there will be no change in the velocity ratio okay there will be no change in the velocity ratio because velocity velocity ratio is what displacement of effort by displacement of load so the distance by which the effort and the load is moving um, is not going to change okay Whereas what um, this displacement of the effort and displacement of the load, remember, is not dependent on the fric on friction produced in the machine or does not depend on the uh, weight of the parts of the machine. Whereas mechanical advantage is dependent on the weight of the moving parts of the machine and also it also depends on friction because every machine will have some friction okay and will have and the parts of the machine will have some weight so because of these things friction and weight of the moving parts of the machine 
what happens is the effort that we need to apply to carry a given load increases because of friction and weights of the machine parts of the machines we need to apply a greater effort to to um, carry a given load all right so therefore what happens is now mechanical advantage is load by effort since we have to increase our effort to carry a given load because of the presence of friction and due to the weights of the moving parts of the machines so therefore mechanical advantage decreases okay whereas velocity ratio is only dependent on this remember it is not dependent on the friction and it is not dependent on the weights of the moving parts of the machine a machine may have uh, friction a machine may its moving parts may have weight but still the displacement of the effort and the displacement of the load will be the same okay irrespective of there is friction or not there is weights of the moving parts of the machines or not you know it's not dependent on that so velocity ratio if efficiency decreases velocity ratio will remain the same whereas a mechanical advantage is going to decrease all right so if eta becomes 50 percent then velocity ratio will still be 1.8 and mechanical advantage will be 50 percent of 1.8 which is 0 0.9 okay uh, i wanted to discuss some problems on pulleys also uh, but pulleys um, will be if you understand block and tackle system single fixed pulley uh, moving pulley okay if you understand that well it's not it will be very very easy numericals all right like this okay you have to learn how to draw the pictures okay so uh, try solving these numericals only if you have a problem you let me know then after uh, we i might make another video discussing uh, numericals based on pulleys okay my video is already very long okay <clears throat> it'd be difficult for me to upload this video otherwise so therefore i will stop okay class 10 do take care of yourselves take good care of yourselves and practice the numericals all right thank you